Nine o'clock, the correct time. WJSV, Washington. Does Hollywood have a heart? The answer to that question will be broadcast over the Columbia Broadcasting System every Sunday night at 7.30 o'clock on the Screen Gill Theater. This program returns to the air September 24th. The greatest of Hollywood stars broadcast, but they receive no pay for their work. Instead, the money, $10,000 each week, goes into the fund to build a home for the screen industry's needy. Be sure to tune in every Sunday night. Tonight, the Columbia Workshop presents the fifth specially commissioned work for the current Workshop Festival. Now, it's summer. A comedy by the young American author and playwright Arthur Cober. Earl McGill is the director. a high school classroom in elementary physics. Charles Crow has taught physics for over 20 years, and what he says, he has said again and again. Now, I want the class to observe that I've just made a parallel connection with these two bulbs. Now, watch closely. By unscrewing this one bulb, so, I put the light out. Now, does that affect the power of this other bulb? Yes, Corey, your hand was up first. Uh, no, it doesn't. Doesn't what? It uh, doesn't affect the power of that there other bulb. Exactly. It does not affect the power of the other bulb. Now, I want the class to notice the bulbs on the other base. These bulbs are connected in series. Now, observe, please, that when... Sweeney? Yes, sir? What are you doing, Sweeney? Nothing. Exactly. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> Quiet, please. Sweeney, you're to give me your full and undivided attention. You understand? Do you understand, young man? Yeah. Yes, what? Yes, sir. That's better. Now, as I was saying, observe the effect as I turn this light out. The other light also goes out. Now, put that down in your books, please. How to tell whether devices are connected in series or in parallel. The test is to turn out one bulb if all go out they are connected in series. If one goes out, what's the answer, Sweeney? The answer? Very sorry to have to disturb your slumbers. Phillips, you give our sleepy friend the answer. If one goes out, they're connected in parallel. Exactly. Now, Sweeney, I want you to read what I've just asked you to put in your notebook. Huh? Huh is not what I asked you to write. <laughs> quiet, quiet, please, boys, quiet. Sweeney... I shall have to ask you to stay in after the rest of the class is dismissed. Minnelli? Yes, sir? I want you to make tomorrow's homework on the board. Page 630, problems 3, 11, 12, and 14. Yes. <laughs> I don't think that's at all funny, Sweeney. Oh, gee whiz. Now a guy doesn't sneeze no more. None of your impertinence. I won't tolerate it. I... Oh, my God. Stop, stop. You will retain your seats, please. The signal is meant for me, not for you. You're all to read the pages on energy and be prepared to define the various types of energy. Now, have you all got that? Yes, sir. Well, we'll find out tomorrow whether you have or not. All right. Class dismissed. Hey. Winnie, Winnie, I want you to come forward, please. Ah, oh, gee whiz, I didn't do it. You will do as I say. Yes, what is it, Corey? Are we supposed to do that stuff about power? Uh, your homework covers that question. Yes, Benedict. Yes, Benedict? Uh, you said I should ask you when I could use the Bunsen burner, Mr. Cloud. Um, will you stop that noise, please? I'm sorry, Benedict. Not today. Some other time. Oh, uh, Corey forgot his textbooks. Will you see that he gets them? Yes, sir. All right. Now, Sweeney. Gee whiz, Mr. Trow, I'm supposed to see Mr. Considine after school. He'll give me holy heck if I don't see him. No. Uh, Here's a sheet of paper. Make out a note to Mr. Considine saying I detained you, and I'll sign it. Gee whiz, what did I do anyways? I was just sitting there. I wasn't hurting nobody. Hurting nobody? No, sir, I wasn't hurting nobody. Hurting nobody? Hurting anybody. Better. Ah, gee whiz, why are you always picking on me? What you got against me, anyhow? Every time I'm in the midst of an experiment or the explanation of some rule, you're either whispering to your neighbor or you're off stargazing somewhere. 
Now, I can't have discipline in my class if you're going to set a bad example, can I? But I wasn't whispering, Mr. Trow. Today I was doing nothing. That's it, Sweeney. You were doing nothing when you were supposed to be listening. I was listening. Don't contradict me. You were daydreaming. You had your eyes closed. That's the way I listen sometimes. No kidding, I really... Sweeney, this has happened too often to be an accident. I'm afraid I shall have to report you to Dr. Curtis. You wouldn't want me to do that, would you? No, sir. Well, what's your average mark, Sweeney? About 70. 70? Hmm. Do any of your other teachers find fault with you? No, sir. Nobody else picks on me. You're the only... Why does Mr. Considine want to see you? He's coaching the baseball team. I'm supposed to be in the park right now. Keep your seat, please, please. I'm not letting you go until we get to the bottom of this. Now, what is it, Sweeney? Come on, out with it. I don't know. Well, there's no need to be embarrassed. This is just between you and me. Now, speak up. I got nothing to speak up. Are my uh, problems too complex? Huh? I mean, are they too hard? Uh, They're okay, I guess. Well, now, perhaps I don't make myself clear. Perhaps if I expressed myself a little more, uh, shall we say, more uh, simply, you'd understand. Now, is that it? Well, I don't know. Sweeney, you must know what's bothering you. I got nothing bothering me. Last week, it was Turner I had to report. The week before, it was Hellman. Now, I don't want to go to Dr. Curtis again. Sweeney, there's an old adage. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Now, you've often heard of that, haven't you? I don't know. Of course you have. Everybody has. Now, there is something obviously wrong with you. I'd like to help you, but that requires your cooperation. In other words, let us say that I'm the doctor and you are the patient, so to speak. Now, in order to affect it, there you go again. What did I do now? Even when I try to help you, you won't listen. You were staring out of the window, wearing that sickish grin on your face. Sweeney, I don't know what to do. I was listening, Mr. Trow. You said you was a doctor. Your constant wool gathering is becoming a source of extreme irritation. You're you're really not a bad boy. If only you wouldn't allow your mind to wander off the way it does. No, sir. No more. Gee, I hope Mr. Constantine... Now, one moment, please. Please, I'm not quite through with you. Gee. Stop your sulking. I assure you, it's no fun for me to stay here after school. But I must do something about you, if only as an example to the other unruly pupils. You... You don't like physics, do you? Isn't isn't that why you're so restless? Go on, you can tell me. I won't punish you. Ah, oh, who wants to be an electrician anyhow? What do I care about that electric light and power stuff? Well, what would you rather do? Play baseball with the rest of the guys. That's what I was thinking when I was looking out of the window. I was thinking, gee whiz, now it's summer. Look at me cooped up here while the gang is in the park having fun. I was thinking, boy, it must be nice out there in the park. It's summer now. But, Sweeney, we can't go about doing whatever we like. It would be a very strange world if we did. There are certain things which have to be done whether we like to do them or not. They make for routine and order. Now, if we were to neglect these duties, we'd have chaos and confusion. There are certain tasks that I have to perform whether I want to or not. I, too, would like to be out in the fresh air. There's also a park a few blocks from the boarding house in which I live. I haven't been there in... Oh, let me see now. Uh, Well, uh, never mind. The fact is that I frequently hear some of my neighbors arranging to go there. There are times when I'm tempted to go along. But do I leave my work? Do I take time off? Do I neglect my duties? The answer, Sweeney, is emphatically no, I do not. Even though it is summer and there is a park nearby. Routine and order, Sweeney, are the great secret of life. Now, learn the simple art of self-discipline. For example, make a point of arriving at your classes promptly. Devote all your thought and energy to the subject in hand. Then, when your classes are over, you can relax. Play your baseball in the park. Have your good time. Happy in the knowledge that you've done your... Sweeney, I... 
Give up. You're incorrigible. Well, what's the matter? What do I do now? Come along, come along. I'll take you to Dr. Curtis. Perhaps he can drill some sense into you. Gee whiz, I'm always doing something wrong. Even when I sit nice and quiet, that's wrong. Nothing, nothing I say seems to penetrate. Everything goes into one ear and out the very same ear. Honest, Mr. Trow, I was paying attention. You were busy. I was... You were busy scribbling away while I was talking. Sweeney, does anything ever stir in that cranium of yours? Yes, sir. Really? How surprising. What were you writing? Oh, it's nothing. Let me see it. It's just a plain piece of paper, that's all. Come on, let me have it. I'm curious to see what you think of, if you think at all, while I'm talking. Well? It's just some scribbling, Mr. Trow. It ain't got no sense to it. No, I don't doubt that for a moment. I'm waiting, Sweeney. Oh, gee. Open your fist, please. Now, oh, let me see what... What made you write this? I don't know. Old Donald Duck. Mr. Trow, old Donald Duck. Old Donald Duck? I didn't make it up, Mr. Trow. Honest, I didn't. The rest of the fellas, they all got You mean that the other pupils also call me this? Do they, Sweeney? I want to know so I can be, well, uh, prepared, so to speak. Do they? It's kind of like a nickname. You'll know, like Red and Shorty and... Old Donald Duck. Is that right? Yes, sir. Why? Why do they call me that? Please, tell me. I won't punish you. I promise you I won't. Well, every time you talk, you... You always go like this. Now then, quack, 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 so to speak... Exactly. Quack, 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 That's quack, enough. quack. I don't want to hear any more. Oh, I didn't want to tell you, Mr. Trow, but you asked me. You said you yes, wouldn't... Yes, yes, I know, I know. All right, Sweeney. I asked you and you told me. That's what I was scribbling. I was thinking, gee whiz, now it's summer. There's the park and I'm cooped up while old Donald Ducky keeps right on quacking. Quack, 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 I've quack. I've had enough of that. Get out of here. Get out at once before I... Yes, sir, yes, sir. Gee whiz, all I did was tell you what you asked me. Stop! Old Donald Duck. Mr. Trow, you are old Donald Duck. Quack, 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 so to speak. Exactly. Quack, quack, quack. Climbing up that ladder and sliding down and climbing up and... Well, dear me, if only they'd apply themselves to their lessons that way. My, my, this is a large park. I'd forgotten how large it really is. Oh! Come on, Mr. Why don't you look where you're going? I, I, I beg your pardon. I was so abstracted. I, I... the baby carriage I'm sorry. What my sweet baby? Did a man hurt my pretty witty soldier boy? Oh, you witty rascal, you! Ah, uh, my baby wants his toy. Where's that toy? Oh, uh, this must oh. be it on the ground here. Let me get it. Boy. Thank you. <laughs> you, you are my sweetie baby. You're your Donald Duck. <laughs> I wonder where I am. This 
park is so big, I just can't find my way about. <laughs> I must have walked a great deal. I think I'll sit down and rest a while. I really ought to be getting home, of course. There are classroom papers to do. Routine. Routine and order. Yeah. Uh, I'm tired, though. Oh, dear, all these benches are taken. Oh, there's a place near that girl over there. I beg your pardon. Hey, what? I'm sitting down on my newspaper. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Are you reserving this place? Reserving the... What do you think this park is, a theater or something? Uh, would you mind if I sat here? Oh, why should I mind? I don't own this joint. Ah, at last I can sit down and rest. Mm, that feels nice. I wonder if this young lady on my right reading the newspaper. I wonder if she's resting, too. Well, what have we here on my left? Oh, the young man. Is he rest... Oh, oh, well, there seems to be someone sitting with him. Say, Kitty, you sure you're comfy now? Uh-huh. Only put down your arm. Just a little bit. Okay, Cleopatra, queen of the Nile. Your humble slave stretchy obeys the noble queen. Say, you want to know something, Kitty? What? It's too bad you can't see your eyes right now. Boy, some set of peepers, wow. What? What's the matter with them? Nothing's the matter with them. You're 100% perfect, your eyes. <laughs> Gee, it's a wonder you can see them. The light here, it's so bad. Go on, Kitty. Take them out so I can examine them. <laughs> Crazy. You know, Stretch, a friend of mine, Shirley's her name, she recommends I should use mascara. What do you think? I think your friend Shirley ought to have her head examined. She must be touched. Mascara. Why do you want to spoil such a beautiful set of brown eyes for? They're not brown, you see? You don't even know the color. They're hazel. Who says? Well, look, I've been down. See? Hazel. Hazel, huh? You mean like a nut? Gee, you sweet thing. Oh, stretch. Now it's summer. They're all in the park having fun. I was thinking, boy, it must be nice out there in the park. It's summer now. Well? Well, what? Well, I guess they're brown all right. Uh, I ought to be home, arranging my work. In me, I'm way behind now on my duties. My, my, there really will be chaos and confusion. Uh, the secret of life, Sweeney, is routine and order. Uh, routine and order, yes. Mm. Well, look at these two, Kitty and uh, Stretch. They seem to know the secret of life. They, they're not cooped in. They're out here, here in the park. They both know it's summer. Huh. Uh, Looks like we've uh, got an audience. The old guy's watching us. Next time, maybe we'd better sell tickets. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I just couldn't... Give me my help. bag, Stretch. Here, yeah, come on, Kitty, before his eyes start popping out. No, please. I, hey, I, too bad you didn't bring your candid camera with you. No, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. Oh, you know, I didn't mean to drive them away, really. I, I didn't. I... Don't let it bother you, Pop. You know, I couldn't help. Listen, you get gray were... hair if you're worried. I thought they were both very sweet. Yeah, and then... sweet. Yes, and and so uh, young, I no, oh, and really sorry I frightened them away. But... Look, Pop, well, I wouldn't worry none about those birds if I was you. You get used to things like that around here if you just hang around for an hour or so. Oh, you seem to know this park. Know it? I memorized it. Mention any leaf, I tell you where it is. What else I gotta do? Sit in my two-by-four and get a nice steam bath when I can sit out here in the open. Look at it. Trees and flowers and lots of nice green grass. I like green for a color. Uh, this is here and has been all these years. What I'd be doing at home right now is sitting and staring at the walls and thinking, what good am I? Where do I come in anyway? Well, in the park, I don't know. People go past you, some happy, some sad. You start wondering about them. Maybe they got their troubles. Maybe they ain't even got a two-by-four with walls to stare at. Then I don't feel so bad. Now, why should somebody else's troubles pep me up? I don't know why. Still, it does. Old Donald Duck, huh? Mr. Trow. Quack, quack, quack. quack yeah? Quack. The man who invented parks ought to get a medal. Don't you think so? 
Hmm? Oh, I, I beg your pardon? I was talking about the park. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, would you believe it? This is my first visit here in, well, in almost 20 years. Oh, from out of town, huh? No, no, I live only a short distance away. Matter of fact, I moved there so as to be near the park. You mean you live on... So you saw it the place or what? No, I've taken it for granted, I guess. You know, like the way you take your neighbors and people around you. You know, when I first moved in, I was in this park almost every day. There was a funny little path uh, where... Uh, yes, I remember now. I was back in the boathouse. I used to walk along it every day, dreaming and planning. Uh, there was so much to plan and to dream about as I walked through the park 20 years ago. Hmm. Funny, but I was running around the park in those days, too. You? Well, <laughs> you must have been a baby. No, I was four years old. Eh, now, why should I lie? I was six years old. Have you ever been in Harden, Minnesota? I've... Never been out of this state. I come from Hardin, Minnesota. Mm. Every Sunday morning, my old lady, she had a romantic nature. She dragged me and the whole family to the Hardin Park to look at the scenery. Me, my brothers and sisters, all seven of us. Seven? Yeah, seven. Oh, what about your father? Well, he was a janitor. He had to stay home and tend the house. But the rest of us, every Sunday we was marching through the park. The parade of the Poniatowskis. The, uh, yeah, Poniatowskis. It's a Polish name. Poniatowski. Yeah, I'd spell it for you, but what good would it do? Oh, it's an odd name, isn't it? Odd. You want to hear my full name? Uh, get ready now. May Allison Poniatowski. How do you like a hand like that? May Allison. Uh, uh, it doesn't sound very Polish. Yeah, just my old lady's romantic nature popping out again. You see, while Pop was cleaning up in the yard and tending to the garbage, the old lady was always off seeing movies. She was simply nuts about movies, especially about her idol, Harold Lockwood. Remember him? Uh, I'm afraid I don't. Uh, well, the old lady was his fan. The family lived in a dive. This was before I was born. And it was full of two things, mice and Harold Lockwood's pictures. Both all over the place. Oh, I don't think I'd like that. Oh, they didn't mind. They was counting on me being a boy. Mom thought if she could see a lot of pictures, maybe I'd be born looking like Harold Lockwood. What do you call that thing? Pre-something? A prenatal influence. Yeah, that's it. Well, having a girl must have been a great disappointment. Yeah, not with the old lady's romantic nature. What the devil? She figured, so long as I can't be like Harold Lockwood, I might as well be like the dame he played opposite. Uh, May Allison, her name. Oh, I begin to see. Yeah, with a hand like that, she figured, maybe someday I'd meet a fella like Lockwood. And I, I don't know. I've been around, I've met a lot of guys, and if any of them was like Mom's Lockwood, all I gotta say is Harold Lockwood was no bargain. Is your mother still fond of the movies? No, nah, to tell you the truth, I ain't seen her in years. The minute my older brother got a job, she up and runs away with a border, a fat little grease ball with a walrus mustache. With Mom's romantic nature, maybe he did look like Harold Lockwood at that. Uh, say, must be uh, kind of late, huh? Oh, uh, I wonder what time it is. You've uh, got a match? Oh. Well, the correct time is 13 minutes to 10, courtesy Century Easy Credit Plan. Oh, is it really that late? Dear me, I... Well, <laughs> thanks for sitting here and let me chew your ear off. Oh, I enjoyed it very much. I don't get a chance to do much gabbing around here. The dames, they don't seem to like my line of talk. And the fellas, they don't want to talk. They got one motto, action speaks louder than words. So, there you are. Well, I'll say good night. I hope that... We'll meet again. Oh, uh, sure, sure. Anytime you're in the neighborhood, just drop in. Guess uh, I ought to be getting back, too. Yeah, go back to what? Yes, and go back to what? Well, look, I got nothing but a two-by-four dump to go to, but you. I? What have I? A, a boarding house to go to. Mrs. Bell, the landlady, is probably very worried about me. I've never been out this late before. But I'll be home soon. I'll be home filling the air with chalk dust and classroom smells and my usual complaints. How some horrid little monster annoyed me and how I had to deal firmly with the rascal. Uh, you... you're a school teacher, huh? Yes, that's right. Oh, gee. Oh, excuse me. What for? 
Well, for talking so dopey, calling you Pop, gee, I should have known right away from the way you talk, so refined like. Gee, ain't I the sad, so? If you'd only tell me what you was... Well, why? What difference does it make? A school teacher, why? You must be awful smart or awful brainy, what I mean. I think of it, hundreds and hundreds of kids, and you learning them things, telling... Or well, what do you teach? Physics. Physics? It's a new one on me, physics. Sounds kind of funny. Oh, it isn't funny. On the contrary, it's quite serious. Well, uh, uh, well, what is it? I mean, arithmetic, that's figures. Geography, that's about foreign countries. Well, it's quite an involved subject. Physics is the study of... Well, you, you don't really want to know, do oh, you? Oh, sure, sure I do. But <laughs> it's going to take time, then forget it. Well, uh, physics is the science which treats of energy and matter and their relation to each other. Oh, I see. Do you? What? Do you see? <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I, I don't. What, what's it all about? Well, roughly, it's about mechanics. Uh, heat, magnetism, light, electricity. It's still Greek to me. Uh, and uh, to my pupils, too, I found out. The only thing that keeps them from falling asleep is the classroom bell. Uh, l look, tell me something. With so much knowledge in the world to pick on, how come you grab such a broken-down thing like that physics? Well, uh, I felt that it had a fundamental relationship to life. Heat, light, mechanics. We, we couldn't exist without them. But perhaps there are more important things. Yes. Sweeney proved that to me some hours ago. Sweeney? The uh, today's particular monster. No, it's summer, he said. Who wants to be cooped up in a room, he said, when you can be... Out there in the park having fun. No, well, he was right. He was right. <laughs> uh, that calliope sounds so gay and summery. That's Pleasure Palace. Pleasure Palace? Yeah. Oh. Say, hey, I wonder if you would... Uh, well, no, no, never mind. What? No, 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 it's, it's too silly. Well, I'll tell you if it's silly. What is it? Well... You know, I'd like to go there. I'd, I'd like to go there now. Will you come with me? Hey, well, wait, wait a minute. Am I hearing right? You do mean Pleasure Palace, don't you? Hey, look, you're too big a boy to go running away from school. Yes, I... I knew it was too silly. Gee, he really means it. So you know what this is, don't you? A pickup. Hmm? Well, not that I ain't been picked up before. Uh, now, uh, where, where's my bag? Do go. What do I got to lose? Well, we won't stay very long. Yeah, so we... I can get my beauty sleep yes. and be fresh in the morning to go looking for jobs. Don't worry, those jobs still won't be there whether I'm fresh like a daisy or not. You gonna shoot the works? The works? I mean, uh, will we go on the merry-go-round? Oh, on the Ferris wheel, too, if you like. And, and uh, can we try the whip? Uh-huh, and the barrel of oh, fun. Don't forget the tunnel of love. And, and, and we'll eat popcorn and apple on the stick. Yeah, I was about hot dogs and ice cream. <laughs> Why, of course, and we'll drink soda pop and lemonade. Can you make mine a root beer? You'll have that, too. Come <laughs> on, I'm getting indigestion just thinking about it. be nice out there in that park. Why, now it's summer. been listening to the CBS presentation of Now It's Summer, a comedy specially commissioned for the Columbia Workshop Festival by Arthur Cooper. Earl McGill directed tonight's performance and Bernard Herman conducted the musical score. The part of Charles Trow was played by Carl Swinson, May Allison Poniatowski by Ann Shepard, and Sweeney by Jimmy Donnelly. We call your special attention to next week's Columbia Workshop, which will be the final broadcast in the current festival series. It is a revival of the now famous Fall of the City by Archibald McLeish. It will be produced in Hollywood under the direction of Irving Reese. Burgess Meredith will play the leading role. 
This program will originate from the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum with a cast of over 500 people to make it one of the most outstanding broadcasts of the year. The time, of course, is 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You may be interested to know that The Fall of the City is one of the dramas that is contained in the book Columbia Workshop Plays, published by Whittlesey House and now available at your local bookstore. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.